video, we will take a quick tour around the controls of the green screen radar set. The first control used each time you begin using the set is the power on off button. The first press will switch the set on and subsequent press will turn power off. On this set there is a separate standby transmit button just above the power button. Alternate presses on this button switch between standby mode where the set is warmed up and the electronics are running and transmit mode which simulates the antenna rotating and pulses emitted from it. The block of rotary controls on the left of the set is used to adjust the display to produce a good picture in varied conditions. The brilliance knob adjusts the brightness of all parts of the display. It has no effect on the processing of the radar image, just overall brightness. It allows the display to be adjusted for daylight, dusk or night use. Gain adjusts the amplification of the echoes. You can liken it to the volume knob on a domestic radio. Set it too low and weaker signals may be lost even to the extent of a blank screen. Set too high and the radar equivalent of background hiss and hum appears as an obscuring speckle all over the screen. It should be adjusted to give either a very slight dusting of speckle or a fraction lower where the last of the speckle is just removed. The tuning knob is used to make fine adjustments to the frequency of the radar receiver to match the frequency of the transmitter which wanders slightly with factors such as temperature. If the frequencies are mismatched the effect is analogous to the domestic radio receiver slightly off station. Images are weakened and lose clarity. The control is adjusted up and down to achieve the sharpest image, ideally looking at a small contact near the edge of a medium range such as 4 to 8 miles. On the green screen radar there is also a tuning indicator at the top of the display. The tuning control can be adjusted to illuminate as many bars as possible. The C clutter knob is used to reduce the effect of unwanted echoes from waves around the vessel. These echoes show up as small, constantly varying contacts, predominantly near the centre of the screen. The pattern of sea clutter may be biased towards the direction from which the wind is blowing, as waves are heaped up by the wind and present steeper faces towards the windward side of the vessel. The sea clutter control must be used with great caution, as excessive levels can suppress contacts of real targets, which by their proximity to the vessel are also the greatest potential threat. Whenever you adjust the range, or return to the radar after a period, you should back off the sea clutter control and reapply just enough clutter control to improve the picture. On the simulator, not all exercises have wind and therefore waves. Wind direction and strength and wave height are set via the weather menu of the exercise manager. The rain clutter control suppresses the often woolly returns from the thousands of tiny raindrops or snowflakes. It differentiates between hard and soft targets by processing the shape of the returning radar pulses. This control usually has little effect on returns from other vessels or coastline except for features such as gently sloping beaches which have a soft profile. FTC is very similar in use and effect to the rain clutter control but applies different processing of the echoes. FTC is more effective at longer ranges and rain clutter at shorter ranges. Range buttons increase or decrease the distance represented by the radius of the radar display. Your vessel is at the centre of the screen, so a contact near the edge on, say, an 8-mile range would be just under 8 miles away from you. The currently selected range is shown in figures near the top right of the display. 
the Heading Mode buttons select the orientation of the display. In Head Up Mode, the top of the display represents the area ahead of the vessel, whatever its current direction of travel. North Up Mode, as the name suggests, rotates the display to put North at the top, with the vessel heading shown by the heading line. Range rings assist in judging the distance to any contacts. The spacing represented by the distance between rings is shown on the display. The rings on off button allows you to switch off the rings for a clearer display if required. The ship's header mark button temporarily switches off the ship's heading line whilst held depressed. This allows you to check in case any small contact is obscured by the heading line. Target expansion enlarges small contacts to make them more easily visible. The downside of this is that you may lose discrimination between contacts close to each other if they merge into one shape. Interference rejection seeks to remove the distinctive spiral patterns which can appear on the radar display if a nearby vessel is transmitting a radar beam at a frequency close enough to your own receiving frequency. It's an on-off control, but as it rarely has any side effects, IR is often left switched on permanently. The wakes button switches the wakes function alternately on or off. This wakes function, also known as trails, leaves a faint image of the previous position of each contact. This is useful for gaining a quick impression of the relative movement of all contacts. Coastline and any other stationary targets will leave a ghost trail on a direct reciprocal of your own vessel's motion. So, in head-up mode, these trails will be directly up the screen. Moving targets will either show some sideways component in the motion, or will have different lengths of trail if they are running parallel to your course. The word wakes appears at the top of the screen when active. The clear wakes button leaves the wakes function active if it's already on, but removes all previous ghost images. This is useful either when the wakes has been in use for some time, or if you change heading. Controls for the variable range mark, the VRM, and electronic bearing line, the EBL, show change or hide these essential features. The VRM is a circle of variable diameter which is centred on your vessel, i.e. centred on the display. The EBL is a line running between your vessel position in the centre to the edge of the screen which can be rotated to any desired angle. These measuring tools have the range and bearing displayed at the lower left of the screen. On this particular model of radar, the VRM and EBL are moved using the rocker pad at the bottom right of the set. They are adjusted simultaneously, and it may be easiest to focus on their intersection, moving this point onto the contact you wish to measure, rather than thinking in terms of rotation or changing VRM diameter. Once the lines are correctly positioned, clicking the Enter button locks them in place leaving the rocker to control an independent cursor. The guard zone controls allow the drawing of an area around or extending from your vessel. Any contact entering this area will sound an alarm. The guard zone is drawn using the rocker pad in conjunction with the show, change and hide buttons and the enter button. MARPA, the Mini Automatic Radar Plotting Aid, enables you to automatically track the movement of other contacts and to warn you of their proximity and risk of collision. The four buttons work with the rocker pad to control this valuable function, which is fully explained in a separate movie clip.
The rocker pad is used to move the crosshair cursor for quick measurements of individual positions on the display. It is also used for the EBL, VRM, Guard Zone and MARPA, as described previously. More explanation of the use of each function can be found in other tutorials.